Chapter 22 is starting at verse number 31. It says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith 
Hell no. Glory. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. It says brother, and it means brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. To strengthen one another. Let's read it again. The Lord said, Jesus said unto Simon, this is Peter, his disciple. He says, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you. He wants you that he may sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brothers and thy sisters. I want to talk to you on a subject very briefly, and that subject is faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. Father, bless your word. That the seeds on the good soil, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be accepted by my sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. Come on, say that. Faith don't fail me now. Faith don't fail me now. We must know that there are several types of faith, and I've preached on this before, that there is a faith that is called dead faith because it just relies on intellect. It means just because I know the word and just because I have read the word, uh, then that gives me a certain level of faith. But I'm here to tell you that that type of faith, just knowing, doesn't mean anything if you don't have any works behind your faith. That means just knowing what to do and not doing it, that, 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 that's just vain. That's, that's just having information and not using the information. That, that's what I mean, let me bring it home. When you get stopped for speeding and the cop asks you, did you know how fast you were going? And, and, and you, you tell the truth, well, I mean, I was going a little bit fast. Do you know what the speed limit is? And they'll say, yeah, you have to know because it's, it's a road that you travel normally and, and, and you go, you're go, you going 55 and a 35, then you're speeding. But you knew it was 35, but you chose not to obey that law. Same thing with the things of God. When we know how good God is and we know what God is able to do, and then we know that when we pray, things happen and God works on our behalf. And when we come to church and give God praise, there's something about when we come to church and we lift our hands and we open our mouth and we give God glory, that God just adds something to us. God just gives us a confirmation and affirmation. God just brings us a feeling that makes us feel better to let us know that he is still with us. So sometimes we just got to praise God and then on the knowledge of God, but sometimes not just the knowledge, but we have to activate what we know. That means we have to actively lift our hands. We have to actively open our mouths and give God praise. It's not just on what you know. Hallelujah. But you have to add what you do. Because uh, I heard uh, it says, be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So that is a type of faith. A dead faith is a faith that just relies on what you know. I don't know about people, about you, but I know some people that, that think they are better than me because they know more than me. Y'all know some people like that? They, they, they think they're better than you because they got the doctorate degree and, and, and you just made it out of high school. Or, uh, you, you went to college, but you didn't finish, but they finished and they feel you know, that they got more information than you. But I'm here to tell you, if you ain't using that information, you just as, just as good as I am. Amen. If you're not walking in that information, if, if, if you know how good prayer is and you're not praying, then I'm here to tell you, you're no better than anybody else. There's another type of faith that is a demonic faith. A demonic faith is a faith that relies on emotions. That means if I don't feel like giving God praise, then I'm not going to do it. If I don't feel like praying, and there's some people that look at the rain outside and they say, well, I don't know if I feel like going to church today. So what that, that type of faith just relies on emotions. And I'm here to tell you that emotions will fool you because the devil will try to make and mess up with your emotions. Have you ever been feeling good? You had a good day? And all of a sudden, the devil just came and just bring, brought a situation, and all of a sudden, you feel bad? That's because the devil is trying to get in your emotions to interrupt your death. 
I'm the only one. I, I, I woke up some mornings and I said, you know what? I'm going to have a good day. I had a good night's sleep. Didn't have no nightmares. And, and my dreams might have been pleasant. And, and I just woke up and rested and refreshed and felt good. Felt like, amen, blood get running warm in my body. And I, I felt good. I said, I'm going to have a good day. And as, as soon as I get outside and get on the highway, somebody cut me off. <laughs> my day is shot. <laughs> The rest of my day is, 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 is because is the devil is going to make me, hey, remind me the rest of the day. Remember that person cut you off. Now I'm, I'm getting off work and look, looking for a blue Honda that cut me off. Cut, get them back. That's what the devil will do. The devil will mess with your emotions. The devil, and that's why I, I, I pray that you, you, those that are not coming, that you just come at least one or two times to our Bible study debate and say, because the higher the expectation, the higher the offense. The greater the expectation, the greater the offense. And some people, we don't expect to offend us, but when, and then when they do, the offense that we have is greater, and the devil will play with your emotions to make you think, amen, some things that are not even there. Mm -hmm. Have you ever gotten an argument? I'm talking to the married folk. Have you ever got to an argument with your spouse or, or with your significant other and, 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 and you got mad at each other and y'all spent days, amen, looking, giving each other the side eye and, and, and barely talking to one another. And when you finally came together to, to, to reconcile, you forgot what you argued about? <laughs> That's what the devil will do. The devil will get into your emotions and amplify something small to make it something big. And it looks like it's big at the time, and it's really not anything. That is a demonic faith. But I'm here to tell you that true faith in God is a faith that grows. In Genesis, Abram had to journey from where he was because there was a famine in the land. And then God, amen, and then made sure, amen, that his faith grew. But a faith that grows is a faith that is tested. So he had to journey to a land that he did not know what was in that land. He did not know, amen, what to expect when he got there. But he went to a territory or a place that he had not seen before. And I'm here to tell you that even if, as we are in the end of this year, I mean, I don't know about you. I'm not going to make too many declarations that I'm going to lose weight this coming year because I said that last year. I didn't lose but maybe two or three pounds. So I'm not going to give too many, make too many New Year's declarations. But one thing I will declare is that next year is going to be greater than this year. Come on, Anybody want to make that declaration? Come on, say next year is going to be greater than this year. Why is it going to be greater? Because my faith is growing up in God. Because as the test, I'm thinking about all the tests that you went through this year. Think about all the challenges that you have. Think about all the trials and tribulations that you And guess what? Out of all of your trials and out of all of your tribulations, in December, December 3rd, 2023, you're still here. Hallelujah. You're still breathing. You're still alive. I know you thought that you weren't going to make it. I know you thought that some things weren't, weren't going to come to pass. But guess what? You're still here. You're still alive. And because you're still here, you're still alive, you ought to still lift your hands and tell God, thank you that you brought me this far. And because you brought me this far, I know that I'm grown this year. I'm greater. I'm stronger. Never would have made it. I never would have made it. And had my faith for the grace of God. But God brought me to this point. And because he did, I know that he's got some greater things for me on next year. It might be some greater trials, but I know it's going to be a greater blessing. And guess what? I'm going to get ready and walk into the new year waiting to see what God has in store for me. But I got to make sure that my faith doesn't fail. A faith that grows is a faith that is tested. And when it is tested, amen, uh, I'm here to tell you that, that God prepared the famine, but the famine is not greater than God. Hallelujah. God is the giver of the famine, but he is also, amen, uh, the tester that he prepares it to be a test. But what Abraham did is when he traveled, amen, to Egypt or wherever he settled as he was traveling, he built an altar. The Bible says he built an altar where he 
he, where he settled. It's just like the children of Israel and how they took, amen, the temple of God, amen, in the Sunday school. They, they took the temple, amen, wherever they settled, they erected a temple so that they could have a place to worship God. And I'm here to challenge you today that where God takes you, wherever you settle until it's meant for you to move to the next glory, I'm here to tell you, you need to build an altar right there. When you build an altar, that means you have a place of prayer and communion with God. That means not only what you really start doing is you start recognizing God for who he is. And when you recognize God for who he is, you just thank him for being God. Hallelujah. You thank him for being your creator. You thank him for being the God that regulates. You thank him for being the God that preserves. You thank him for just being the God that sits high and looks low. You thank him for being but then after you thank him for being God, you thank him for what he's done for you. You thank him for him keeping you. You thank him for him protecting you. You thank him that you're still alive and still in the land of the living. Hallelujah. Thank you. you build an altar, but I'm here to tell you that when you build an altar and you begin to talk to God, God is not going to let you talk to him and he don't talk to you because God will allow his voice to be heard and God will comfort you. God will come into your presence. God will minister unto you. That's what I reminded when Jesus was, was about to go to the cross and he was in the, in, on, on the mountain and began to pray. The Bible says that he said, Lord, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And then his emotions got involved in his prayer. But then he changed it and said, Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. And after he said that, the Bible says that angels came and ministered unto him. I don't know about you, but when you're going through some things and you need God to confirm and affirm his word, I dare to come to church and give God praise and allow the spirit of God and the glory of God to minister to you. I, well, when I'm going through, I come to church and I lift my hands, I open my mouth, and sometimes all you got to do is say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you. And there's something about the spirit and the presence of God that makes everything feel better. Not only does it feel better, but it looks better too. Uh, some people, their look stays the same. But God can bless you that you can look at them differently. You can look at them with the eye of forgiveness. You can look at them with the eye of love. You can look at them with the eye of peace that they may be in turmoil, but you have peace about yourself. I don't know about you, but if there's anything I really want and really want to hold on to, and it's the peace of God. In the midst of all the chaotic world that's going on, amen, I want to be able to have peace. I want to be like that preacher that was on the plane, amen, the plane who had, I mean, four people, full flight, and, and, and they had a lot of turbulence going on outside, and, 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 and the plane was shocking, was shaking, and, and the plane was on the electric slide. It was going side to side, and forward, and put, like the wind was blowing it backwards. It was going electric slide, you know, it's electric. It was going that way, and, and and what, it, what, what happened was everybody, the mass had started to drop down and everybody was panicking and crying out. Amen. And this, 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 this man was just, just laying back, amen, with his seat reclined and, and his eyes closed. And, and the person next to him said, man, what's wrong with you? Amen. Don't you know we get ready to die? Amen. Don't, don't you need to, you know, you're not crying. You're not saying you're just sitting there all calm. He said, well, he said, what, what, what do you do? He said, I'm a preacher. And God said, everything's going to be all right. So the man that was talking to the preacher, he looked at him and then he, he closed his eyes and then he reclined his seat. And somebody said, man, what's wrong with you? Everybody calling you and you, you're not doing nothing. He said, man, Rev said, we're going to be all right. Because a faith is a faith that is tested and a faith that grows. So not only will you have faith, but you will cause others to have faith just because you hold on, just because you don't give up, just because you praise God and people know what you're going through. They know the pain that you have, but you still give God praise anyway. That's what you can encourage somebody else to give God praise. Faith, don't fail me now. So as I close, Jesus was talking to Simon and he got to the place where uh, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for you. Uh -huh. 
so that he may sift you as wheat. That means that Satan, uh, just as he did with Job, he is accusing us of being unfaithful to God. He, he is accusing us of being blasphemous to God. Satan has desired uh, to sift us as wheat. And if you know anything about a sifter, amen, I grew up, my mother taught me how to bake before she taught me how to fry chicken. And, 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 and all I wanted was the cake, but she brought out all of these ingredients. I said, what's all that for? She said, you got to put them all together. And then when she got the flour, she said, you need three cups of flour. So I went and got the cup and I did the flour. She said, no, you don't do that. She said, here. She pulled out this little metal can with a little wheel on it. I said, what is this? She said, it's a sifter. Yes. And I put the flour, she said, put the flour in the sifter, and you sift it on this plate, and then you dip and get an accurate measurement of flour. But when I realized, when I was sifting the flour, there were some things in the flour that wasn't supposed to be in the flour, and they would have gotten in the cake if I didn't sift the flour. So sifting breaks the flour up and it separates it from things that are not supposed to be in there. And I'm here to tell you that that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to sift you because you got love and the devil says love is not supposed to be in there. You, you, you got peace, you got joy, but the devil says that's not supposed to be in there. So the devil desires to sift you as weak because he wants to separate you from the things of God. He wants to separate so you don't give God praise. He wants to separate so you walk around unforgiving. He wants to separate so you don't even love nobody, even yourself. He wants to separate so you don't have no peace of mind. He wants you to walk around mad all the time. The devil desires to sift you as weak. Uh, but notice what Jesus said. Jesus said to Simon, he said, I pray that your faith fail not. He didn't pray for Simon to be delivered. He didn't even pray for Simon to be healed. But he prayed so that his faith would not fail. That means that lets me know that he had to go through what he had to go through. And sometimes Jesus, when well, God will do the same thing for us, there's some things we have to go through. There's some trials we have to go through. There, there, there's some tribulations we have to go through. But God knows that when we go through, it's bringing us to a place where our character is getting better. When we go through, it's bringing us to a place where we're stronger than what we've been through before. And is there anybody here that can think about the trials that you had on this year, the tribulations that you had on this year, the affliction that you had on this year, but God brought you out and God allowed you to come into the sanctuary to give them praise. I'm going to tell you, don't demise what you've been through, but celebrate what you've gone through. Celebrate what you've gone through right now, and celebrate what you're going to go through. Because sometimes God will not deliver you. Sometimes God will not heal you. But Jesus prayed that your faith fell not. Because you faith in what you're going through. You need to be able to stand in your tests and your trials. Because we've been made in door for a night. But God is going to come in the morning. He wants you to stand on his promises. Do you tell our angels that his praise is sin? But all of my life he has been faithful. All of my life he has been good. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, Oh, my soul cries out, hallelujah. So every now and then, let me just add to your prayer. Because somebody's been praying for God to make a way. Somebody's been praying for God to touch and heal. Now somebody's been praying to move that affliction. But maybe out of the affliction, set of the righteous. But God is a deliverer. Because I 
Did nobody sit down in the sanctuary today and look at the chair and see if it was going to hold you or not? That's right. You just sat there. Because you sat there before and you trusted the chair. Nobody got in that car and before you turned the key and said, I wonder if this car is going to start. Unless you got a BMI. Anybody got a BMI in here? I know you heard of BMW, but I'm talking about BMI. is called barely making it. <laughs> <laughs> if you got a BMI, I'm just saying, you pray every time. Please, Jesus, please, Jesus. <laughs> but if, if you got a regular car, I get it. If you got a regular car, I can almost guarantee nobody got that car this morning and say, I, I pray this car starts. You just started it up. And we should have just as much trust or more in God than we do the chair that we sit in and the ignition that we turn. We should have just as much trust in God that we can just rest on Him and just know that He's going to watch over me. That if I have to go through something, He already knows, He sees, and He hears. And guess what? He will not allow me to suffer and fail in the temptation. But with the temptation, He'll make a way of escape. Because his strength is made perfect in my weakness. Yes. I'm saying it's because there's some things you might have to go through. Yes, sir. But it's to increase and grow your faith. Yes. If I go through it again, I'm stronger than where I was before. Right now. But there's still some other levels that you have not experienced yet. And you're going to have to say, Lord, faith don't fail me now. Mm. There's been a great trial, tribulation, confusion amongst the saints. Some of the strongest saints I thought I knew have been failing in faith. And their works show it. Because they're not doing things they used to do. Because they said, I've done all this, I've hung in here this long. And God ain't done nothing yet. Oh, God. I might as well yep. just walk away. Yep, Lord. I might as well just give up. But now when you give up, now you have no hope. In the things that you go through. And you're a man without hope, and a man without hope is a man most miserable. And there are some people that would rather wallow in the mud like the prodigal son. And beat on dead stuff. Then go back to the father and say, just make me one of your hired servants. God wants to make you a son and a daughter again. That means if you have strayed in your faith, if you have strayed in your trust in God, now is the right time, the perfect time to say, Lord, my trust is in you. Come on, let us stand on our feet. Faith don't fail. Down. The altar is open today for anyone that desires prayer. God is a keeper. God is a deliverer. God is a way maker. That whatever you're going through, the altar, some say it's for saints, some say it's for sinners. But the altar is for anyone that desires or needs alterations. The altar is for anyone that desires. And my prayer is that God will continue to increase our faith. Know that your test and your trial comes to strengthen you. It comes to build your character. It comes to make you strong. It comes so that you can grow in the grace of God. If it had not been for the grace of God, we don't know where we would be. But His grace kept us. His grace is keeping us. And I would look to the hills. That is coming to my help. All my help comes from the Lord. And may the heaven and earth. Those that are at the altar today. I pray that your faith begins to grow in God. I 
even more. Through every trial, through every tribulation, you might want to stand and cross it with someone else. It may not even be here. But I pray you will strength in God. Pray that your faith fail not when you are converted. It's time for us to strengthen one another. It's time for us to be an example for one another. It's time for our testimony to be a testimony that will encourage and strengthen one another. Because when thou art converted, strengthen your brother and our sister. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, O God, for your goodness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. Thank you, O oh God, that you have brought us to the last first Sunday of this year. We survived 23. We thank you, O oh God, because we survived this far. We trust you to take us the rest of this year into the new year. We give you the glory, and we thank you for what you for us. Everything that we have done, everything that we have put our hands to do, you have protected us. We thank God for no broken bones while we play football. We thank you, O God, for watching us on the highway that the accident didn't take us out. And we give you that glory for keeping us. Our faith has made us strong. Our faith will continue to grow in you, O God. And we pray, O God, for every child, for every tribulation. Lord God, we put our trust and our faith in you. Our faith will come to the old God. Bring the strength of understanding. Bring the strength. Amen. That, that, that overcomes and differs. Bring the strength of forgiveness. Bring the strength of peace. Bring the strength of joy. In the name of Jesus, bring the strength of faith. And we give the name for it. We magnify the name. Now, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh with us now. Let us feel your anointing. Let us feel your presence. Let us feel your glory. That makes all things new. And Lord, we trust in you. We trust in you. We trust in you. And as we are converted, give us the wisdom to strengthen our brother and our sister. Increase unity among the faithful believers. Increase unity in the church, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you, oh God. And we give the name of glory. We give the name of honor. And we give the name of praise. Come on, let's put our hands and let us bless the name of the Lord. We give the name of glory. We give the name of honor. And we give the name of praise. Come on, let's bless his name. 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 And we will keep it. And I trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen.